always keep a spare dirty thumb handy for marking. <laughs> That's why you do it. Yeah. where they went from having running boards yeah I took the running boards away made the cars wider and then they wanted to add flare so like all of these bits on them are all add-ons okay so your front wing can come out to there but then their platform for the car was narrower so they built these remember this one from ages ago where to cut it and re-weld it and oh yeah to get it all to fit so that Basically, Melbourne can have back. So these are captive, so they stay in there. And there's spot welds that have rusted through, so that and that we could probably just blob a bit of weld in there. Outer skin, that's going to have to come off. If you're doing one of these, if you can, instead of going to a point there with your metal you're putting in, because it'll always rise up when you weld it. So if you can get that in at a a radius, you've got less chance of it just picking up in one point, you know? So now what we've got to do is look at what the state of the inner frame is. So when you cut the outer off of that, that we just marked up, you can replace the inner frame there. It looks like we'll get away with it to there. This can come off, because all that is is on the original trim it has another piece of metal on the inner door card and it slides down in there and holds it it will never get trimmed up originally so we've got no rust in the bottom but you've got rust here so what i'd be inclined to do is try and weld up any small holes and then just fold up a small piece and again wouldn't have any problems with laying a piece on top of that I mean if you're going to do it properly properly you cut it all out like I've done before but now this customer wants it done quicker yeah so we're back to sort of laying things on top to make obviously the outside you can't do that so this corner's gone completely but again the outer skin isn't too bad so again it's just working out where we're going to put pieces in that's quite easy to put in as a lump we can cut it into this area, yeah, because it's easier just to cut it into that area than it is to try and lay it over. So maybe that corner there, we'll have to take this off and see what's underneath it. But again, I would be inclined to just weld it in to there, because yeah, your outer skin's okay as such. You know, like I say, if you were doing this properly, properly, you'd take, cut the bottom of the door skin off completely, repair all the inner frame completely but we're not at that situation with this vehicle, you know. If you've got to drill out spot wells, like you run your finger along, there's one there, there's one there. With the shape of that, you put that point in the center of it, and then you sort of wiggle it around as you go in, and it'll, it'll drill out, you'll take some of the spot weld out. Can you see that there? Gives it, so you don't want to go all the way through with it. You need a bigger one actually. So it just pulls it off. Yeah. You can feel the dent where the spot weld is to so try and get it around about where you want it. So that's quite a good tool. You can, you can get them. If you're going for a panel like that, with a lip on it, yeah? It's called a spottle, I think, the tool, an air-driven one. And then it has another lever that comes over here. 
like a tube bar and then goes onto that so you can it actually grips the other side of it okay yeah. when you're doing it they're, they're bloody good they are the outer skin's all right there let's get rid of that bit probably try and weld up in situ because that has a, a cover plate see those two scrolls there mm -hmm. that has a cover plate over the hinge anyway but you might as well try and do it while we're here you know basically we want to chop that out flatten him out a bit that's a drain hole for the bottom of the door that you can probably remove that and we'll come back to our last you want to look for your last rust hole doesn't matter how big or small it is so you've got one there one there and you've got one there so if you're putting a plate in there you might as well do it past your last rust hole yeah yeah and we're not going to take the outer skin off so we just want to go to that level there and then we'll just where that corner is we'll just weld, weld him around there and then you it's a lot easier than taking the outer skin off you know yeah what are you thinking just at the moment you want to make sure you get the right shape so before you cut anything out you want to make yourself up a little template which is another thing which people can do as a mistake you get gung over the cutter and start hacking everything out then you suddenly think ooh what, what shape was that because yeah. that it doesn't it's not a normal radius that it sort of comes in and then goes round so you'll have a line, almost a fold line down there, you see. So we'll get a grinder and tidy it all up a bit. And we'll just run a grinder along there where you've gone through the spot where you end up with sharp bits. Just take them off and cut yourself otherwise. And I'm good at that. Are you talking health and safety? <laughs> yeah. Knock the sharp edges off, and you can't cut yourself on them. We want to come back to there, but we don't need to lay all the top in. We just want to go back to that rust point there. Okay, so we know that that's our radius then, which is easy enough to copy. So if we cut that piece out now. We know where we're at with a radius, so if we mark that, go to about there. And we can line that back up <coughs> on our marks. And that should replicate that. It does, doesn't it? See? Yeah. So when you chop that out, you know what length you're at, so you can line it up with that on a template, yeah? Because yeah. that radius could be there, could be there, could be there. You know your square on the bottom edge, and that's where your line's up to. Yeah. So now we'll chop this piece out. You might as well come all the way up to there. Well, you've got another skin there, so no, we'll go just below that. You don't want to get into that other skin in there. It's very easy just to whack into it with a disc cutter. Spend a little time trying to work out what you're going to do before you start smashing it all up. Yeah. And then it just makes your life a bit easier. It saves a lot of work afterwards, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I know there's another skin in there, strengthening skin. You don't want to cut through that again because yeah. you're just making more hard work for yourself. So we're at 35 mil there. 35 mil there. So we'll chop that piece out. That's just about in line with that. We're not worried about that because we can come round more with that. So we're not worried about when we cut that down there going into that because we're replacing that anyway.
actually in theory you could really use that as a template but it isn't flat it goes up like that you see yeah so you've got to put that piece in now and then you can measure your piece to go underneath when you've done it Cut out what we can with a disc cutter because it's a lot quicker than the air saw and a lot less noisy, which okay. is good. Anywhere on there, so you can start it just by holding the blade and you will eventually get a cut started. But if you can just put yourself a little hole or a slot to start, it's a lot easier. Instead of just holding it, use it like you would a saw as well, and it, it, it's much much more effective. You want to leave that radius on there, so you just got a butt weld there. Yeah. Because if you do a weld like that, and it's dead right angles. You haven't got anything to grind off. Yeah. So when you grind it off, it'll basically just fall apart. Yeah. Unless you can really, really lay some weld in it, but. Right, so that's basically cleaned up. We'll give it a quick grind up. Those I'm not worried about, because that would have been your water drain anyway. So what we'll do is we'll weld it to there, and weld it to there, and we'll leave a gap there anyway, mm -hmm. just to let the water out the bottom of the door. So you've got one there and one there. It's all doors leak. Yeah. It's the way they are, so. You can make it whichever way you like. I'd be inclined to put this piece in now, and you know you've got something to measure to for that piece. Yeah. I want to leave myself a little bit extra on this side because I want to replicate that radius. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to take up that weld. Always keep a spare dirty thumb handy for marking. <laughs> That's why you do it. Yeah. That's slightly longer, isn't it? So you can always double check against your original piece. I just want to take that little bit off of the end there. And you could just slap that on there and draw around it, but it's just showing the process of doing it, you know. And that's pretty good with time that's radius out. Flatten him back out. That'll be fine. Now we just want to put our little radius on it. Square, so. Right, let's try that. Oh, I'm just 
trim a little bit off of each edge of that. Jim was saying before you don't want to butt weld it, you want to leave a bit of a gap. Mm -hmm. And then because once you ground it down, there's no metal left. Right, okay. So that's gone in fairly flat there, that door's bent that way, it's not going to make any difference, you're never going to get that dead flush, do you yeah. know what I mean, so get a tack in where you want to. that's overlapping that very slightly there look so when you try and hammer that round you just want to give it a bit of relief there Near enough, good enough. We'll come to about there, don't we? You know what? That'll do us for starters. Trim a little bit more for that. Okay, and let's trim up the grinder. Right, that'll go, won't it? bigger gap than what I wanted but that world so if, if you've done a bit too much once you go past the point it's best to start again yeah I mean I can fill that up with weld I'm not worried about that yeah, but, if it's, but if it was too much just make another one yeah yeah just um because you know you've got your basic shape there now how much would you say is a too bigger gap you got about what a couple of mil there yeah I mean if you're inexperienced at welding you want it fair you want millimeter max yeah but i know i can i can fill it you know so we want to come down probably another couple of mil there don't we get the pencil in there, actually again you know you're not cutting things with exact straight edges so you're going to end up with bits where you've got to fill it up a little bit or yeah see what you could do with that because you've got that radius left on there, you could have welded that over that and you still have enough to grind it off. Yeah. But it's just the different ways of doing things, isn't it? 
also as well because of the fact that you can get to both sides of it you can get inside and push that in and out wherever you want it to be you know yeah. Back on there, and we can start manipulating it where we want it to go. This here, obviously, you, you welded that to that to save taking the outer skin off. Okay. So you just seam seal around that. That'll be fine. Next week on the workshop. So when you're putting the roof lining in like that, I mean, how much, how worried you should you be of any wrinkles? I mean, uh, not majorly. I mean, like, see those ones in the middle there. As soon, as soon as that gets some heat on it, they'll go. Yeah. 